Hello and Great. welcome back, Mandu Batu. Got it. Okay. You got it. We're good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, welcome back to Bamboo Batu, uh, Bamboo Dialogues, where we discuss all sorts of topics of bamboo. And today, my guest is Natalia from Peru. I will let her introduce herself and pronounce her last name. <laughs> uh, she just told me how to pronounce it, but then I just, um, I don't want to say it wrong. So um, yeah, she's been working with bamboo for a long time. And we met, uh, originally we met at a Frog Geeks uh, workshop, I believe, about uh, six months or a year ago. And then we met in person in Germany a couple of weeks ago at the Bamboo Expo in Dortmund and had a super good time. And I think, uh, I think Natalia, I think it was your idea that I start doing bamboo interviews on my YouTube oh, channel. Oh, really? Well, so, I have to uh, get some credits or some revenues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll get a percentage of the uh, of the penalties that I incur no. <laughs> of my videos. And uh, yeah, so really excited to have you here today. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you got into bamboo? Okay, Fred, thank you very much uh, for for having me today. Uh, I'm very glad to see you again, to get to talk to you because we have very nice chats in the the expo especially. And he's very modest. He can pronounce my last name very good, Reategui, which is a challenge for, uh, for English native speakers. <laughs> I've been working uh, with Bamboo since 2005 around, maybe... Before that, I started uh, in Colombia. I did a, a like an internship in different like uh, work, looking how they work with their with their value chain. They had like round tables where all the um, the stakeholders would meet to see to see how they progress were, was was uh, was going. And actually, this was uh, the aim was to create policies. No. Um, it, it was a very good idea. That now it's uh, it's it's uh, it's transfer was transferred Imbar or and by certain policy makers in also in Peru and now in, in Ecuador as well. And I am totally like going other to other way, but that was the way that I started working with Pabu. And I am a forest engineer. Uh, that's my career, and I have done also bamboo management, and lately I have done also some taxonomy with native uh, bamboos, American bamboos. Nice, yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know there's tons and tons of bamboo in South America. You always hear, or, you know, those of us in the bamboo world, we hear a lot about Colombian bamboo and, and bamboo in Ecuador, mm -hmm. but... Peru doesn't usually come up uh, in the bamboo conversations. So when I learned that you were specializing in, in bamboo in Peru, I thought, huh, bamboo in Peru. Well, obviously yeah. there's bamboo in Peru because there's bamboo everywhere. There's uh, bamboo everywhere. Actually, bam uh, Peru and the Amazon basin, it's, uh, I mean, there's a theory or a hypothesis that says that Guadua, the center of diversity of, of the genus Guadua comes from from the uh, from the Amazon basin, no? corresponding to Peru, Brazil, more mm -hmm. or less. So that's where the Guadua the ancestors started, and then they started spreading all over America. So yeah, we have we have, uh, and then yeah, of course the uh, um, the Andes is a very high peak in Peru. So we have a lot of diversity in the eastern part of the Andes. Um, okay. Yes, and we don't talk, normally we don't talk about uh, the herbaceous bamboos, which are also quite important in diversity, in the, because they are not studied or they are not considered important, no? But they, of course, have their ecological function. Right, So okay. in Peru, this day, it's talking only about woody bamboos, because that's mainly what I have been collecting. Uh, and because as a forester, I am more, like, like uh, more keen to go to the woody to the, the woody ones. We have sixty two species to the moment uh, in about six or six genus. No. Okay. 
Right. These species, these uh, numbers are growing because the collection has been very, very. I mean, they they are not bamboos are not normally not considered when when they are doing forest inventories or ecological studies. There's not that many people collecting bamboos. They are overlooked, no, in the, in nature. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, for those who don't know about the uh, woody bamboo versus herbaceous bamboo um which a lot of people aren't aware of that but yeah when we talk about bamboo we usually we're talking about woody bamboo the, mm -hmm. exactly. it's like it's a grass but it's very woody and hard so it's good for building and all kinds of different craft making but there's also a huge variety of herbaceous bamboo which is short and bushy and soft um more like a shrub or like an herb which is why or more like a grass bamboo. no and some of them look exactly like grasses Mm -hmm. uh, but they have some uh, some anatomical differences mainly with uh, with the, with the other common grasses, no. Okay. And yeah, and their main, as you said, the main difference with uh, with the woody ones are like the they are not hard; they break easily, no. And they usually so, grow like in the shade and under, mm -hmm, under the canopy exactly. of the tropical forest, right? Yeah. So so actually, they have. They could have a very nice potential as, as ornamental plants, no, for for shade or for for coverage instead of uh, using the normal like king grass or the American grass. You have other options. No? It could mm -hmm. be a, a good option. And some people are like doing some small experiments, but as a very um, like very empirical, not not with. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, in North America, you don't see herbaceous bamboo no. at all in, in no. nurseries or gardens. That's stores. very tropical. That's very tropical, yes. Okay, but in, in South America, people are starting to do that, to grow herbaceous bamboo in pots or... I mean, I, it's only among, among the, the bamboo sect. Okay. <laughs> like people are totally crazy about bamboos. <laughs> people uh, like they us. Normal normal people still don't do it. No, normal people don't do that. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> it's a it's a nice a nice experiment a, a nice option. Actually, uh, another another nice example of the use of of herbaceous bamboos. It's a genus called Olida, and Olida, one of the rules, uh is one of the most diverse uh, countries with Olidas. This is a herbaceous bamboo but it's quite big I mean like it's not only like uh, bushy and and covering just one meter it's, it's it's longer it can grow quite high and um, the stem is uh, is harder than, than the others no than the others herbaceous bamboos and there's a um, there's an entrepreneur in one city called Satipo that he's doing now from Olida from this uh this herbaceous bamboo he's creating for making um straws bamboo straws okay drinking uh, drinking straws exactly drinking straws and he's now commer commercializing them in uh, in lima which is the main market for all bamboos and it's very interesting it's a very inter in interesting entrepreneurship However, yeah, it's like mainly it's harvested from from uh, from the wilderness. No, I don't think that there, there's like a possibility of of over harvesting because they grow quite fast. But you would never know. I mean, if you take if you harvest, I don't know, one twenty thousand um, plants per week, I don't know how much this could uh, affect. You know the. Oh, um, wild populations of these plants right right interesting mm -hmm. um yeah there's a lot of things that are interesting about that there's the <laughs> the fact that the the bamboo is the right size for making straws it's the right size and, exactly and like the right weight and stuff mm -hmm. um and then just yeah just to replace single-use plastic straws um i'd be willing to to over harvest slightly just to get rid of all that plastic <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. And also, like, they grow back. I mean, right. uh, it's not like they would disappear. It's like harvesting with a lot, with huge differences, uh, like harvesting mushrooms that you don't, actually, you don't, uh, mm -hmm. you don't kill the plant. You're just taking one part of it, you know? Right. 
so um, well, mushrooms are not plants, but but it no. was like <laughs> the example. <laughs> yes, let's be precise here. Yeah, let's uh, be precise. It, it also reminded me of something else we talked about in Germany uh, about wild bamboo and farming bamboo. And you, you were pointing out that some bamboo species have not been domesticated yet. So if people try mm -hmm. to farm them or cultivate them um, for some commercial use, it can be really difficult to do that with certain wild species. So it sounds like... Yeah, they are because some of them... Um... Especially there are some like very delicate ones that could be like really interesting for ornamental purposes that they fall like a, like they create this kind of waterfalls effects, you know, especially in the Chusquia genus. Mm, they grow in very, uh, how to say, very specific uh, sites with, with, with a lot of humidity and, um, and these differences in humidity during the day and also of temperatures no? at, at night it, it's normally in this cloudy forest it's really cold no and humid until 8 9 a.m that the sun comes out and it gets really hot no? so these variations could be really dramatic for uh, for installing for the first time at least um, one uh, like a wild plant no Maybe in case of domesticating, domesticating has, has to start for sure in the same site as they grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like yeah, that make, makes me think about Peru. It's not a, it's not a really large country, but the, the variety of climates there, just, and it goes from sea level up to like some of the highest peaks in the Andes. So mm -hmm. the variety of, of climates and microclimates and, you know, with altitude and precipitation and, and everything else uh, is going to obviously result in a huge diversity of plants, um, including bamboo, right? Yes, totally. It's, it's actually, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's such, a, it's not that big, it's two, two million square kilometers. Okay. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's much bigger than many countries here in, in Europe. For sure, as many, I mean, it's not at Brazil, which is a continent by itself, but right. I guess that is not that, that small as well. But you're totally right. I mean, the Andes, um, the location of the Andes uh, and the uh, and the proximity of the of the ocean, no, and also like all of this hot air coming from Brazil actually creates um, a huge amount of microclimate, for sure, and yeah, and this desert on the other side, no, on the on the western part, which is like mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. I... Lima, Lima, for instance, which is. Uh, Lima, which is the capital, it's a, it's a huge province. It goes from zero meters over the zero meters in next to the sea level to 4,800 meters. So in one day, like in four hours or in six hours, you could be from from, zero, from next to the, I mean, the beach and then, you know, like being 4,000 meters. <laughs> 4,000 meters. Yeah, that's like. 13,000 feet. Yeah, that's pretty high up. Mm. Nice. Um, cool. So as far as, uh, yeah, diversity of bamboo, I didn't I didn't do any serious research before this conversation, but I'm assuming that Chuskea is probably the most, or one of the most prevalent uh, genus of, of bamboo in Peru, which grows widely all over Chile and, and South America, all the way up to Mexico. So I'm assuming there's a lot of that in in, yes, uh, yes, Peru. yeah, it's um, it's about like 100 more than 180 species uh, of Chusquea. So, yeah, it's quite it's quite uh, abundant and also very difficult to uh, identify. For me, it's, it's always a challenge to my, find uh, Chusquea, mm -hmm. mainly especially when they are not flowering. So, uh, and now we are, have to be very precise when we when we try to to char characterize one species we collect. Mm -hmm. so, like trying to be really specific in the 
sizes of every organ and everything, especially when they don't have flowers. Um, but yeah, it's it's very difficult to identify actually in general. Mm -hmm. But especially Chuskea because because of the of the of the high diversity and the high amounts that there are. No? And there's a lot of new species. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 180 species mm -hmm. for, for a single bamboo genus. That's that's a lot. That's cra it's crazy. Yes, so totally. And it's very it's very. Um, I mean, the possibility to find new species in one one collection. Um, um, I mean, in one collection. How do you how do you say it in English? The collection have the 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 word in yeah, i'm not sure what I'm not in, sure in what one um expedition in one collection expedition oh, okay it's, it's very high no it's very high to, to... In, right. the, in the last expedition that i made we found two species, two species. Oh, nice. one is already described and one was collected by a uh, by Beto, uh, uh, a colleague of mine, and then the other one, yeah, we collected. I collected it in, in one mountain, and it's or it. The first one is already described, and the second one is in description now. Nice. So when you discover a new species, you get to name it too, right? Yes. You yeah. haven't had that pleasure yet. Yeah. The, no, I would put my name in one. On, it, it, I don't know. <laughs> well, you don't have to name it after yourself, but you could name it after. Ah, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Normally, I we we choose um always something geographical, no, the name mm -hmm. of the locality or um yeah, something like that, something more specific with a with a geographical position or if it has um some morphological peculiarity, also you can use it. Right. Right, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so so for viewers and listeners who don't know, Chuskea is yeah, a real interesting South American bamboo genus. Um, it's most, I think most notably has solid combs instead of hollow combs. So it's really useful for, for building and different applications like that, right? Or at least certain, mm -hmm. like the larger species. Yes. Furniture also. One the most uh, the most well known and studied species in the Chusquea uh, genus is Chusquea culeo. Coliwe uh, is called in Chile, the southern from southern Chile, and um, yeah, and they and actually in in Chile is quite used for construction, also for furniture, no, and because it's it, when it's fresh you can bend it. Easy. And nice. yeah, that's the most studied one. Uh, but I found one one similar in Peru. I think it's uh, it's one species that was described in Ecuador a couple uh, some time ago, but without flower. The description of the, that species is also without flower. Yeah, I have to to send it to the specialist to actually to confirm it. No. But it's uh, like five centimeters um, diameter, and they are using it already in this locality for construction, for, for making the structure of bajareque, some kind of bajareque mm -hmm. mm -hmm, with this species. Nice. So that brings us to another good uh, topic, which is the the use, like commercial use of, of bamboo in Peru. Yes. Um, I know it's a it's a struggle in a lot of places to to commercialize the bamboo. Even though, as we know, bamboo is used, um, at least Chinese bamboo is used for thousands of different products. But a lot of other parts of the world where bamboo grows, they don't have the industry there for it to, to process it into any interesting products. So you mentioned furniture making with the, with the solid combs um, and the straws from the herbaceous bamboo. Mm -hmm. Is there any other... Um, industry or commercialization mm. of bamboo happening yes i mean i can i can separate it into into like into bunches would, would be the native ones and the and the cultivated ones 
The cultivated ones, we have also a couple of natives or one, at least one native species, no? So let's start with the native ones, which is, uh, which are like, like uh, faster to get because the, it's not like such an industry. Mm -hmm. What's the species called Ripidocladum harmonicum? Are also Aulonemia keko. These are two different genuses um, from uh, from yeah from na Native uh, American bamboos. And uh, these um, these two species were used for for uh, for musical instruments. You you can and Aulonemia keko is also used for make palm flutes and and the other palm flutes. I don't know how do you call them. In in English, well, we have different kinds flutes. of palm flutes, palm yeah. flutes and palm, yeah. um, palm flutes. Um, um, yeah, there's yeah, I don't know all the different names. There's the transverse right. flute, and then there's the upright like, flute. But, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So flutes in general. Um, there's one enterprise doing doing them, you know, from bamboo, from native bamboos. I don't, I don't know if they're using now introduce ones maybe so in ripiocladum harmonicum which is a very it has a very very thin wall but, but strong enough to make very nice um flutes like this mm -hmm. uh, they used it and i remember when i did my thesis in 2008 i did my my bachelor thesis there was a whole community a small community actually only um only fabricating or these palm flutes from this from this species no we collect them from the from the forest there were white the wild species only collect collection of this of this um this of these calms they would dry them and then they would uh, they would handcraft them no but this community doesn't exist anymore and I think that, the, that for palm flutes they are using other species or also like PVC uh, um, plastic tubes. Mm -hmm. And the problem with this, it is very difficult now to find them in, in, in the wilderness, unless you go to higher or like protected forest, because people are not using them anymore and they want to open you know, agricultural land. So they are kind of endangered now. You can imagine that they're endangered. There's not like a specific study saying that they're endangered. But it's very difficult to find them now. Okay. And um, there are other small communities making uh, also baskets you know, from from a specific species that they find next to their, their, lo their localities. So we can talk about small handcrafts no? uh, made with this native species. Mm -hmm. And from the native species that are more utilized uh, is guadua. Well, we used to think that it was guadua angustifolia. Even the, the norm for construction was based on this species. But it happens to be, seems to be a native species now described as guadua takahashiae. By Jimena Londoño. Okay. And it's very no. very similar to Angustifolia, though. Giant See, timber it's, species. It's, no, it's not. Uh, the, main, the main difference is that it's a little bit of the notes are kind of in a zigzag. It's very subtle, okay. but uh, you could see it from, from one picture. Uh, so they are kind of in a zigzag, and they have some. Uh, the, the um, calm leaf it also has some also some other characteristics like the form of the legal like very small i mean if you see it, it looks like uh, well angustifolia but if you start like looking the morphological organs then it's different and also it flowered so they found out that it was different okay so, so now they are trying to to actually make a dna uh, analysis. The Peruvian government and INBAR are working together and sending some samples to Eduardo Ruiz or to Mexico to um, and to find out which species species actually it is. No. Okay. Oh, they are. 
uh, and other guavas as well. But mainly the Peruvian, the Peruvian, um, uh, how to say, the Peruvian value chains. Supply chain is mainly mainly four species. Drogalum, ah, no, sorry, not Dendrocalamus. It's Guado angustifolia, uh, then Philostachys aurea, okay. Dendrocalamus asper, and yeah, and Guado atacahashia as I say, no? But they are mixed now. So the Guado angustifolia mainly come from, from Ecuador. And even there's like some storages along the coast because because along the coast is where you commercialize them it's the main the main local market where you can sell your product okay around lima and also like in the north also um you can find some storage places so they kind of um of classify the 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 bambus by uh, by diameters, and the first class is mainly the guadua coming from Ecuador. We have to take into account that 47% of Ecuador's exports to from 2017 to 2019 were going, coming to Peru or going to Peru. Right? Of exported from, from Ecuador? From Ecuador, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. And then... Uh, the others, the, the national ones, the national bamboos, um, are second class, no, and or mainly, and then philostachys are sold in like in bundles of uh, of ten columns around ten columns and everything. But so this in this uh, these places they sell them, but the. the there's, there are several things that are not okay with this. First of all, the storage storage system that they use is very precarious. No, the bamboo is not protected. Against, so it's wet uh, and moldy and rots and stuff. I mean, the bamboo is always like touching the, the floor. Most of them have like this kind of sandy, sandy floors, no? Mm -hmm. No. And they are like, they, they, are, they don't have roofs. So the bamboo is exposed to the sun all the time or to the humidity. Well, right. it's impossible not to be exposed to humidity next to leaves. <laughs> but at least uh, to the sun, yeah, they are not protected. And, and also the quality of the management is uh, from, from the plantations. And also I'm sure that in Ecuador, they just cut them. However, some of them are already are still green. Which means that they are not they are not for construction because they are not four years. We don't have idea if they are actually how old are they when they cut them. You know, you don't have the the in is the the sources are not trusted. So so it's not clear, they are not preserved also. So the quality of life or the quality of the product is quite low. So uh, so this actually comes as a also like a consequence as a consequence the quality of the of the of the plant or the of the bamboo no it's depleted because of this uh, of this management issues. Right, right. That's a pretty common problem too in, in places where they don't use bamboo as much and then there's not as much knowledge about the bamboo and then so they don't harvest it very well and then mm -hmm. and then so it doesn't produce high quality combs and it just kind of creates a cycle where it's just under undervalued and yeah exactly there's a there's a market i mean there's a, a lot of places selling uh selling bamboo around uh, around lima which is the main market for for all products made in peru no? how big is uh, lima you know, roughly two million. How, how big? Yeah. About 11 million persons. Oh, wow. Okay. By the census, I yeah. think that there are more. <laughs> there might be more. I mean, it's just that the official official uh, data tells that it's around 11 million people. Okay. So that's a huge, huge city. Yeah. It's a huge city, yes.
and it's centralized. Peru is a very centralized country, no? So all the services and all the institutions are based in Lima. Mm -hmm. nice. oh, but but uh, but but uh, I mean, like bamboo is quite quite sold because in the deposits they they talk. I mean, because we did some census also, some inventories of of these storage places. They told us that they had about bought about 2,000 units, be some of them per week, some of them per month, some of them every two weeks. That means that the market is there, no? Right. Even if they don't want to to buy to buy a good product, because I'm sure that that uh, a preserved uh, product or well managed for sure it won't cost the same. So whatever. You know, whatever I harvested, whatever, <laughs> whatever it came, whatever is storage, no? Thing. Nice, nice. Um, so, yeah, it's some interesting, interesting things about mm -hmm. Peruvian bamboo that I did not know. <laughs> uh, thanks, yeah, for sharing that. So, um, we were talking earlier, you've got some... A workshop or a class coming up that you're doing on yeah, with, shoots yeah oh well, thank you very much uh also like in the last last years i've been working a lot with bamboo shoots we've been harvesting them but we have a lot of philostachys aurea in and some dendrocalamus aspect as well but then, then but philostachys aurea we have a lot i moved uh to a small city called san ramon uh, which is in, at the other side of the Andes, but directly, directly from Lima, but at the other side of the Andes. Okay. They have, uh, well, have the Philostachys aurea, they planted it, or they just have been there their whole lives. So, so we're talking about not managed, unmanaged uh, Philostachys aurea plantations. They're quite old already. Mm -hmm. but they still have uh, good shoots. And the shoots of Philostachys aurea are really, really delicious. <laughs> they're really good. I mean, at least ones that at their mind might not be the best, but we have been harvesting them and uh, and pickling them and nice. and doing some uh, a, a little bit of co commercialization in Peru and the last times. So we um, we created this workshop with my together with my colleague Mauricio Mora. He lives in Mexico. He makes bamboo beer and also harvests uh, bamboo shoots. They are now experimenting with bamboo flow, um, flour and chips and everything. So we created this very nice nice um, workshop with four sessions. We tackle everything about management of bamboos. Um, we are more specialized in tropical bamboos for sure, but we are going to tackle also some. Uh, well, we're talking about we have to talk about mosso, no? Because this is what we have also here in Europe the most, and we are we are um, developing this uh, this workshop with Frogix. So everyone, if you want to check out. Uh, what this is about? Go to Froggy's LinkedIn, or you can also. I'll put a link, I'll put a link in the notes um, down below too. Mm -hmm. And um, um, maybe like get to know more about this, or just write me, or write me directly. Also, this is my last name, my name, my last name. You can find me also in LinkedIn and get to know more about this nice workshop. Nice. Yeah, sounds great. Mm -hmm. yeah, we always talk about bamboo shoots and, and how delicious they are and nutritious, but most people don't really know exactly how to harvest them or the best way to, to manage the bamboo to get the best shoots out of it. And then as far yes. as preparing the shoots, um, steaming them or boiling them or pickling them, exactly. um, stir frying them, there's like so many things you can do. But Yes, and also I now I've been... Uh, they are great for. I mean, it's a great, great um, uh, 
a product to actually have in an agroforestry system because because uh, mainly the, the the management of shoots is quite intensive so you just leave a couple of of individuals standing mm -hmm. and most uh, most of of the of the rest of the shoots just go away and you harvest them for for eating no or for processing them but actually you don't have that much uh shadow side because the problem with agroforestry is normally the the the, um, the canopy closes and then you don't have any more light. Okay. So with some species, as for an Dendrocala mosasper, you have so much uh, spacing that you can actually develop a agroforestry system. Now with bamboo shoots, it suits perfectly. Yeah, and asper has those big shoots and beautiful. The one asper shoot is more than one kilo kilogram. Nice. So you can feed the whole family and then exactly. some, some bamboo beer and would you say bamboo chips also? Yeah, they're making bamboo chips. I mean, just like you cut them in slices and uh, well, they're making tests now. Uh, Mauricio and he works with a university. So they're testing, testing nice. bamboo chips. And nice. Flowers. I did not know about that. So they you just slice it really thin like you would with a potato. To make potatoes, yeah, chips, and then put them in a dehydrate, dehydrator, dehydrator, yeah, something. dehydrator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to cook them first, no, because to get rid of the cyan cyanide, and that's right. So you mm -hmm. boil, you boil it first, and then and then you slice it, and then dehydrate it. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the the, met the methodology. Yes, okay. I've never done them. Not okay. my. My friend, uh, my friend Mauricio is the one that is testing. Okay. No. Well, if we want to know all about it, we'll have to check out your uh, your class coming up on the. <laughs> coming up, <laughs> coming up. Nice. It's, it's very nice. There's a lot of nice information. Also, the nutritional values of of, of uh, bamboo shoots. I now I already, I actually um. Mm, adding bamboo shoots to my diet it's very good for fiber it has a lot of fiber inside mm -hmm. um, I don't like very much the ones that they sell in the supermarket because they taste a lot the problem with bamboo shoots is that they kind of of um, suck all the all, all the taste of the food or the that's why they are so good for pickling no because they just Okay. All the taste from the from the vegetables or 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 like right. I don't know, liquids where they're in. So this uh, acetic acid normally mm -hmm. they use it like it's a kind of a vinegar, but I don't know. It's more much more intense, no? So mm -hmm. so um, yeah, I don't like that very much. I don't like the taste that that they get from the scans and. Uh, Mm -hmm. So where do you get fresh bamboo shoots in in Germany then? I don't. I mean, I don't. But I am doing this. If you wait one second, I'm going to show you. Okay. <laughs> so she lives in Germany. For listeners and viewers, uh, we didn't mention that earlier. She's from Peru, but she lives in Germany. Yeah. I am kind of clean them again. Oh, nice. Okay. I sorry. Where is it? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh, so I, carrots in actually, there. I bought the I bought the like this I don't know they're like some kind of plastic things with uh with bamboo shoots from China from the Asia market. Okay. And then I wash them very well and I'm, I'm clean them with uh with other vegetables. See mm -hmm. how they come out. Because the only they were netto they had they had some bamboos in a jar like this. Okay. Salted like this in, in water with salt, mm -hmm. and the taste was really nice. I mean, it was just like neutral, no? How, how do you and, pickle them in, in salt water or you add vinegar? Or, oh, it's, this is vinegar, uh, vinegar and water and uh, spices, yeah. No? And then you have to also, of course, like try to disinfect all the so otherwise they would start like molding, but now oh, they are. 
developing quite well. Nice. <laughs> it takes probably what two or three weeks in the jar, or yes, you have to put them in the shadow, uh, in the in the darkness. Mm -hmm. It takes uh, two three weeks until they are they're ready, and let's see how they come out. I hope that yeah, I because I bought also from Mozo Bamboo. Uh, I bought like all the products that they had with bamboo shoots mm -hmm. by them, uh, but the shipping was more expensive. Than the oh right! Yeah, so it was just a one-time, one-time thing. Where, where did you order it from? From from Italy. Oh, from those. Okay, from so only, the most only bamboo, from the from the main web page. You know, they have they have this amazing like. Bamboo shoots with truffles infused oh, right. um, oil. It's they're they're exquisite. I mean, like they're, they're like a first class product. They're amazing, but yeah, but the shipping is. It's I mean like mm. not, I mean I don't know. It was I don't know how much it was fifteen dollars maybe. I had to pay like twenty five euros for the shipping. Ridiculous. Yeah, I've heard about the the truffle oil infused bamboo shoots. I haven't tried those. I need to. And that those are bit. amazing. And actually, the price is quite well. The problem is the shipping. Yeah. No. And uh, but if you have the uh, chance to order them, or you have someone from Italy going and visit you, or whatever, get the chance because they are amazing. I mean, like yeah. really something out of this world nice. i'm not exaggerating <laughs> i know that i am a bamboo good enthusiast but... <laughs> nice good uh good bamboo tips here at bamboo batu <laughs> yeah uh, any other any other topics of peruvian bamboo or anything else we want to talk about or should we wrap things up um i don't i i mean it would be I could we could talk about could bamboo the whole day, but... but yeah, like in a very messy way. So um, yeah, I I go visit Peru. <laughs> but something something important that I want to to um, ah yes maybe I, I'm I'm sure that the way that they plant bamboo is similar. So in some other uh, countries, no, but the way that they plant bamboo in Peru is mainly. Uh, we don't have, I mean, I think that now we have one big plantation, but mm -hmm. normally there are small plots, no, small holders, and they right. have bamboo plantations here and here and here and here. So um, with not a very well, uh, very good objective. I mean, they don't have like the objective, objective quite clear. Uh, clear. There are some people, uh, some amazing people working in the field with farmers and doing I mean, like foresters directly in the field, good friends of mine, but um, but still, it's a very. I mean, the articulating to get like big amounts, you have to articulate and to negotiate with a lot of small holders, no? Right, so, right. It Makes could it be really expensive. Um, but now I have to say that the Peruvian government. The, the National Wildlife and Forest Service, they're doing a great job. We have a national bamboo strategy. I hope that it's um, with a very interesting point. I think that it's, uh, they're trying to actually link academy producers, users, and and the government themselves. So I think that that's, okay. that's important, no? We have a... Yeah. The government, the government's really proactive in, in promoting the. They are, the, they have the their national team. strategy. They have some, some. I mean, the, of course, the, the budget is not enough. But uh, they're trying to include bamboo also in, in like financing uh, schemes, no. So yeah, I, and I think that there's a competitive advantage uh, from Peru versus Colombia, for example. In Colombia, it's very, uh, the use and the commercialization and harvest of wild angustifolia is really, how to say, it's really limited. It's it's it's, it's almost prohibited. It's like a national treasure bamboo. So 
they it's very difficult to to get permits to to harvest and people are like losing interest i don't know how now bamboo I know that there are some companies with private land uh commercialized there's a big one no well bamboo that it's now commercializing mm -hmm. mm. um best best bamboo in colombia yeah so problem. yes so yeah, but in but we have I mean, mainly we don't have like protected protected um forests so sorry <laughs> Wait. yeah so so yeah so we have mainly like private uh, private land so we get we could actually create some some nice uh plantations and like commercialize our products no of course it would be better to have like some added value added but still we mm -hmm. Have, we have a long way to go. Right. Well, I'm glad to hear you're working on it. And there's, uh, yeah, awareness is increasing and things are happening. It sounds like. Yeah, finally. I mean, I've been working in Bamboo for the last 15 years, maybe more. And yeah. the, all the, this dynamic just started, well, right, just like started in the last maybe five, six years. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. It's definitely a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot more interest in bamboo in the last uh, couple of years than there has been in the past. It's yes, exciting time for bamboo. It's a well, time for fun. Cool. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been great learning about uh, bamboo in Peru. So if you're, if you go to Peru, anyone, uh, definitely check out the bamboo. Don't just go to uh, Machu Picchu and then go back home. Stick around and. <laughs> admire the the woody bamboo the herbaceous bamboo mm -hmm. the, the cliff the cliff hanging bamboo the mountainous bamboo huge variety and uh yeah look for some canned bamboo shoots while you're there or some fresh pickled bamboo shoots yes ones yes uh if you go to machu picchu anyway machu picchu there's tons of bamboo i mean around like we take in the if you take a picture and you see the vegetation it might be chusquea also Okay, nice. Yeah, so you don't hear about that when people talk about Machu Picchu. Mm, yes. <laughs> I haven't been there, so um, it's on my list of places to go. Um, great. It's been super fun. We'll put some links down below for your, your LinkedIn uh, profile and um, other articles related to South American bamboo. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you very well, much. Well, thanks, Fred. It was really nice talking, uh, catching up. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. again soon, I'm sure. Okay, I hope so. Okay. Bye, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Nice. Um... That was great. That was super...